name? My name is Robin Wilson. And where are you from? And I am from Inkster, Michigan. Ooh, how long have you lived in Inkster, Michigan? I lived in Inkster, Michigan for 28 years of my life. Wow, mom and dad still married? Um, my mom grew up in Inkster. My dad grew up in Detroit. And uh, my mother is still living. My father passed away when I was 16. Um, so we grew up, and my sister and I, in Inkster, Michigan. And um, when I married, I it was the first time that I actually moved out of the city of Inkster. Well, that's interesting. So I see that you are a teacher. What uh, motivated you to become a teacher? I became a teacher because I wanted to encourage young people to love reading. Because reading is something that I think is important. I love to read myself. And I love encouraging young people to read. Um, I'm a children's author. And so I also write literature for children and I'm a poet and so because of my love of, of writing and of reading I became a children's author I became a teacher to uh, encourage young people to love to read and also when I was a younger a person when I was a child I was a struggling reader so my journey to becoming a successful reader was not straight a straight path and so because of that, and because that's something that I overcame as a young person, I wanted to inspire other people and, and children in particular to develop a love for reading so that hopefully they could do some great things themselves. Yeah. Well, that is wonderful. Um, what was the, what did you find was a struggle for reading? Like, what was the hardest thing? Was it like reading comprehension? Was it the just reading in general? But what was what was your reading struggle? My reading struggle was understanding how to decode words, and it was also the fluency aspect of it. I could once I finally figured out how to sound out words and to make meaning of words, I would not read them quickly or with fluency, what we say with fluency. So sometimes I would forget <laughs> what I read. Um, and once my fluency improved, then my comprehension also improved because I could actually remember everything that I read and, and understood what I was reading about. But it took developing some strategies for decoding words and also becoming a more fluent reader before I actually hit my my stride and and really took off. So you said fluency. Was it something like you read slower or you yeah. just you did? Okay, it was like spotty. That's right. I I would if there were words that I knew on the page, I could read them out loud. But then um, when it came to words that I wasn't familiar with, I would just really struggle through sounding them out. And then it would shake my confidence as I was reading because it, it broke the, the fluency of my reading I, when I would have to pause and try to sound out the, the word. And it was embarrassing because, you know, people can be cruel and kids were absolutely cruel. And so uh, it was something that I was not proud of and I, I hid for a long time, or at least I tried to. I would read to myself privately because I felt safer reading to myself. But when I was around my peers, uh, I really struggled. And I'll never forget, I actually walked out of a youth Bible study when I was 13. And I walked out because I had been asked to write a written response to the Bible study lesson that had been given. And my youth uh, Bible study leader walked out after me to see if I was okay. Of course I wasn't because I knew that I didn't want anyone to see that I was struggling with that task. And, and so she encouraged me. And when I shared with her what my struggle was, she really encouraged me. She, she shared her uh, testimony with me as well. And 
she told me that I could overcome that challenge and she worked with me and she helped me to become more confident with my reading. I developed some strategies for improving my reading and then I soared. Um, I think that I've always been a curious person. I've always been a learner. It was just um, a struggle for me to find my stride in that area because I did very well in science. I, I always had done well in science. I found a lot of confidence in that area. And I also love history, so I, I did you know, really well with history, but it was just getting to that place where I was confident in my reading that really helped me overall. And I went on in my junior year in high school and I competed in uh, speech competitions within a health organization that my school engaged with. So my school had a dual enrollment program and I enrolled in a medical assistant program. And they had an organization called Health Occupation Students of America. And I participated in the medical terminology and speech competitions because I thought that after I graduated from high school that I wanted to go into the medical field. And my teacher, Rian Glennon, she encouraged me to compete in speech. And I was not as outgoing as I am today. So um, it wasn't the first thing that came to mind to do. But I did it, and I'm so glad that I did because I really excelled in speech. I wrote a speech that ultimately won at nationals during my senior year in high school, and it really uh, solidified that I was a good writer and that I was capable of delivering a wonderful speech that people listened to, and it let me know that I had a voice, and that really put me on the path to writing other things as well as speaking at different events and I continue to speak to this day and, and share my story with others. If it will encourage them, I will share my story so that others know that you can overcome challenges to become successful. I've gone on to graduate from the University of Michigan, Dearborn. Go Blue! I'm proud to go Blue. And while I was at the University of Michigan Dearborn, I actually became the first African American woman to become an alternate candidate to teach in Senegal, uh, Africa through the Fulbright uh, program. And so that was a, a major accomplishment for me. And it's significant because it just shows that it doesn't it, what's most important is not where you start, it's where, you, where you're going and that you have a plan to get there. And for me, because I was able to see something different for myself because of the encouragement of Mrs. Princeton and, and many others in my family or my community, I can say that I'm where I am today. And that is why I do what I do because I know that when you share your story and when you uh, encourage someone, you never know where they might be, you know, and, and what impact your words and your story might have on them. Because um, when someone can reimagine their future, they can become something amazing and they can even transform their communities. And so that's why I do what I do. And so, you are a teacher where? I teach at a foreign language immersion and cultural studies school in Detroit. And I teach first grade, English language arts, social studies, and science. And I love teaching all of those subjects. And the most amazing part to me is that I get to work with young scholars who come from different backgrounds because there are students from all walks of life who go to our school. They test into our school and they have to complete an interview. And they're curious. First graders are curious in general, <laughs> I think. But they have a desire to show up and give their best. And, and I really 
appreciate working with them. I know they appreciate working with you. So not so you you also do motivational speaking. Um, what do you have coming up? So I'm involved in the Fair Consulting Group Leadership Experience Tour, and I'm participating as one of the speakers that is a part of the tour. I'm sharing my story with uh, a broader audience, and it's exciting because. I've been speaking for a long time and I've been sharing my message with others and this is an opportunity for me to share my story with a broader audience and um, it's been amazing to work with the different uh, individuals who have been involved in the tour and I'm excited to see where it leads. Where do you want it to lead? I would like to expand my speaking platform. I would like to speak at more national events. I have spoken at national events for workshops, but I would like to take the main stage. I would like to um, pursue opportunities that give me a platform to share my message with a broader audience. And I would also like to speak globally, start speaking globally. I haven't done that yet, but I have a global mindset and perspective. So I think that it would be amazing if I could use my voice to not only reach people in my community as I, I have done and nationally, but also on a global scale. I think that's amazing. And I, and I know that that's what you're gonna do. Three things people should know about you. I am someone who is committed to serving others. I believe in getting to know people and, and listening to them. I'm an intentional and intuitive listener. And I think that has helped me. I think that's my superpower as a leader because I can find common ground with others. And I try to put other people before me in the sense that when I walk into a room and I know that I'm there to serve others, I make that my priority. Because I think that when you prioritize other people who you're serving, then it, it doesn't endear them to you. You don't have to impress people with your resume because what they care most about is that you care about them. And then once they know that you care about them, then they will naturally be curious to know more about you. So I always keep that at the forefront of my mind when I'm dealing with people, when I'm working with people. And the other thing that I think that others should know about me is that I'm compassionate. I'm a compassionate leader. And I think that I'm compassionate because I've gone through a lot and I've overcome a lot. So I'm sensitive to other people's struggles. I think we all have struggles, even though our struggles may be different. We all go through things. And I think that when, when you walked on a certain path and you've had to overcome a lot, it does make you more compassionate, at least it has for me. And the last thing I would like for people to know about me is that I lead with not only purpose, but I lead with passion and I always try to have a plan. I'm a planner and while I know that sometimes not everything goes according to our plans, uh, I'm intentional. And so I'm intentional in achieving my goals. I'm intentional in the work that I do when I'm working with organizations or, or individuals to help them with their goals. And all of those things I think are important for strong leadership and I'm a leader. Yes, you are. One word, one word that describes you. One word that describes me is resolute. Resolute. Very interesting. <laughs> um, I say resolute because again, I'm intentional. And when you're resolute, you are intentional. You, you have a plan. And I think that it's important to have have vision as a leader, it's important to have passion as a leader, but ultimately it's, it's important to have a plan because you can have a vision 
and you can have passion. But if you don't have a roadmap to get to where you're trying to go, you're not going to get there. And, and that's what I do. I help people get to where they want to go because I've used these same strategies to help me get to where I want to be. And that's what I'm passionate about is helping other people and organizations to do the same. Absolutely. One word that describes God. One word that describes God, love. God yeah. is love and we are never more like him than when we love. And your name again is what? My name is Robin Wilson. And I am a teacher, author, and motivational speaker. All right. That was excellent.